that? Yes. Can you speak up, honey? I sure will. Thank Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. It's to those I love. And who is all of them, but in particular, it's to the children. If I should ever leave you, whom I love, to go along the silent way, grieve not, nor speak of me with tears, but laugh and talk of me as if I was beside you there. I come, I come, could I but find the way. But would not tears and grief be barriers? And when you hear a song, especially a country song, or see a bird I love, please do not let the frog me be sad, for I am loving you just as I always am. You were so good to me. There are so many things I wanted still to do. So many things to say to you. Remember that I did not fear. It was just leaving that was so hard for you to face. We cannot see beyond, but this I know. I love you so. I love you so. Was heaven here?
that Ms. So Michael wrote about two, three months ago. You wrote this, Mike? Okay. This is Gordy Blakesley's eulogy. Death is a topic we usually avoid, yet it happens as often as hurt. You would think by this time in our history, it would be something we could easily discuss, but unfortunately, we still haven't reached that level. So with that in mind, let's talk about life, the life of Gordon Blakesley, as well as discourse on eternal life. I would like to discuss eternal life as it seems such a fitting topic at a time like this. But first, let's start by talk, taking a look at the life of Gordon, who was born May 8, 1934, to Ostrom and Sadie Blakesley. Ostrom had two children, Ruth and Alfred. When he became a widower, he, he fortunately he found a wonderful mother to make up for the loss in a beautiful soul named Sadie Weaver. Together they gave birth to three boys, Gordon, Manly, and he who sits here today. Gordon had a charismatic way about him and found it quite easy to make friends. Even at the end of his life, he made the dearest of friends at the hospitals and nursing homes where he resided. Many who came back to visit him at other facilities just to hold his hand and kiss him goodbye before he left this world. One of whom is Cindy. She is here with us today. Once in January, while talking with the hospice doctor, he said, I hate to see a guy like your father in pain because he's always so pleasant and jovial to talk with, and I always enjoy our conversations. I just want to throw something in here, too, about the nurses. He flirted with them. <laughs> we talked to him the day before he passed, and she came in and she said, I thought he was the only one that flirted me. I was the only one. But I came in the room one day, Others and I thought he was being me. <laughs> 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 While Gordy was in his mid twenties, he decided to pick the pick up the guitar and found it suited him quite naturally. He formed a band as the front band playing rhythm and singing. They were called Gordy and the Black Velvets. <laughs> and they were well known in a large area of upstate New York. At various times, he was, in his life, and probably sometimes to this many, <laughs> accompanied by his brothers. 